Hey guys, what is up? And I welcome each and every one of you to a very new episode of the Digino series. This episode is going to be featuring Rek'Sai. As usual, if you end up enjoying this one, don't forget to hit the like button. But without any further ado, let's go straight into the abilities. Rek'Sai's passive heals her for 25 times whatever level she is over 5 seconds, restoring 450 HP at level 18 with 100 Fury. And this passive expends 20% of her current Fury every second. However, her passive is not dynamic, meaning it will not recalculate the Fury depleted and the HP gained per tick, but only calculate it once as a passive is initially activated. Her uprooted Q applies on hit effects, on attack effects, and even lifesteal effects, but only to the main target and not the AoE portion of the Q. And on top of this, critical strike damage will not take into account the bonus damage applied from her Q. The damage of her uprooted Q will not affect towers, and her Q, don't forget, is an auto attack reset. Even though Rek'Sai's Q on hit damage can be dodged, blocked, parried, and blinded, the AoE portion of this ability will still go through regardless and hit the champions or minions around that target. Rek'Sai's Tremor Sense whenever she's underground shows larger circles for enemy champions and much smaller ones for minions or monsters that are moving. For instance here you can see that the Tremor Sense of the Scuttle Crab is about half the size of Twitch's. And on top of this, a really cool thing about Tremor Sense is that she is able to detect invisible champions walking around as well. Whenever Rek'Sai takes her tunnel, for the duration of the movement, she is treated as being burrowed, gaining Tremor Sense, but not activating her passive heal if she took the tunnel while being unburrowed. A tunnel being destroyed while Rek'Sai is still using it will not prevent her from finishing her journey. Did you know that enemy champions will only get vision of her tunnels on their minimap if they have seen that tunnel at least once and from then on will remain on their minimap even through the fog of war? A somewhat strange thing is the fact that the tunnels are programmed as units, meaning things like teleport, lead sins W, etc. will work on them. Her tunnel creation range can be much longer than indicated if used on a very large wall, making her ganking power extremely deadly. Rek'Sai is untargetable when using her ultimate and automatically arrives at her destination in the burrowed state. Rek'Sai's burrowed Q, her uproot knockup, and her uproot E can all be blocked by spell shield. Alright guys, let's go into some cool facts and lore about Rek'Sai. The designer of Rek'Sai was someone named Beat Punch Beef, somewhat of an interesting name. The voiceover for Rek'Sai is unknown, probably because there aren't really any words spoken, meaning it may have been done using some audio engineering. It is possible that Rek'Sai is based off of the Graboids from the movie Tremors, since they have very similar characteristics between each other. Another possible inspiration for Rek'Sai could have been Omen, who is a cancelled champion in the League of Legends. Another similarity to Rek'Sai is, I probably pronounced this incorrectly, Shai Hulud from the movie series called Dune, and they are desert dwelling creatures much like Rek'Sai. In her lore, Rek'Sai is about the size of a house, however in game she is scaled down to be more of a suitable size. This also happened with champions such as Cho'Gath, Skarner, Malphite, and Nautilus. Though many Voidborn champions already exist, such as Cho'Gath and Kog'Ma, Rek'Sai is the first female. Did you know that all Voidborn champions tend to have an apostrophe in their name? Cho'Gath, Kog'Ma, Kha'Zix, Rek'Sai, and Vel'Koz. Rek'Sai is the first champion to have a tunneling type ability, introducing a whole new mechanic to League of Legends. And on top of this, she is apparently the first champion to not have a dance animation that is automatically looped. Rek'Sai is the only champion in League of Legends to be classified as a fighter, but not have a secondary role. Let us go into her lore. The first major thing that we learned throughout Rek'Sai's lore is that there are specific species among the Voidborn, Rek'Sai being a part of the Xerzai species, while also being their queen. But her lore does state how she is a merciless predator, laying waste to regions of the once great Shiriman Empire, how merchants, traders, and caravans would go an extra hundred miles just to avoid the areas in which she lurked. But if she ever did detect you, your fate is sealed. There is also a small story, sort of as an add-on to her initial lore of a man writing a diary during his travels within Shurima to find his fortune. And throughout this, he and his crew have killed many Xerzai creatures, however very very small ones, until they face Rek'Sai, a creature that still gives the rider nightmares and something he hopes to never see again. 
Rek'Sai is the first champion to not have any form of dialogue, but if we include pseudo champions then she is the second, with the first being Mega Nar, unless you also take into account Agnivia and Valor. Eternum Rek'Sai may have been inspired by the Moor Wind from the movie Outlander, based on their color scheme and the red glow. This Eternum theme is also shared with Nocturne. Rek'Sai is not a sapient, unlike the other Voidborn creatures, so much that Cho'Gath would even be terrified of facing her. Alright guys, that unfortunately is it for this episode of Did You Know featuring Rek'Sai. If you did enjoy, please don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends, check out the previous episodes as well, and you can also write down what you want to see for the next episode, or if there's any cool myths or theories you want me to go over. But as usual, I thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you for the next one. Peace.